Hey folks, I'm Tommy Technetium. I'm a super nerd chemist. Some of you guys call me a Giga Chad. Today, we're gonna be making an RGB liquid using oscillating chemical reactions. You know, oscillating chemical reactions, they are a little bit bizarre. And in fact, when these were first reported by certain scientists, most of the scientific community didn't accept that they existed. They thought they violated the laws of physics. All right, we're gonna set up an oscillating chemical reaction here. A little bit of sodium iodate ion in here. Oh, that's taking a little while to dissolve. We're gonna acidify it with some sulfamic acid. Oscillating chemical reactions are extremely complicated. They follow complex what we call mechanisms. The mechanism is the specific way the reaction carries out. So yeah, they're, they're complicated, but there's a few things we can learn about these things. All right, over here I'm gonna add some malonic acid. This is one of the reactants. So malonic acid is what's gonna react with the iodate ion. And overall this forms iodine, which is a colored species. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of manganese here as a catalyst for the reaction. And then we're gonna add a little bit of starch because that lets the iodine show up a little better. Iodine will turn uh, black or purple, bluish purple in the presence of starch. We gotta get these dissolved. I've also added a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to this beaker over here. So you can tell I mixed a lot of stuff together. And then we're gonna see if this works. I hope it does. Let's see, you ready to roll? All right, here we go. We got a little color change. Oh, look at that. We got the formation of iodine reacting with the starch to turn the blue color. And hopefully, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's pull a little bit of this out. And I'm gonna just put some drops here into this. Look at that. Even the individual drops are changing color. That is crazy. I love it. Now again, how these work is really complicated. But still, if we delve into some of these oscillating chemical reactions, we can learn a little bit about how they behave and why the different colors are generated. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's just weird. Like you can see certain parts form color first and then it kind of spreads throughout the whole droplet. It's crazy, you can even see it doing it. <laughs> you can even see it doing it in the uh, dropper. Look at that, that is just crazy. It's beautiful. If you look close, um, you can see bubbles forming. That's because uh, carbon dioxide is a product in this particular reaction. So those bubbles you're seeing, that's, that's carbon dioxide gas that's forming as a result of the reaction. And the oscillation is the formation of iodine, I2, reacting with the stars to form a purple color. And then that iodine is actually re-reacting to form a colorless iodide ion. And that's what's driving the color change. So what are we gonna to use to get all these different colors in the oscillating chemical reaction? Well, what we'll use is something called transition metal ions. Now transition metals, when they form compounds, they form beautifully colored compounds. So it makes sense to use these types of compounds in, in our chemical reaction. Compounds. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of iron ions to this flask here. Gonna try to make our iron indicator. Remember, the iron is what's gonna give us the red and the blue color. The iron two gives us the red. And if there's iron three, we're gonna see blue. Now first, we just wanna get some of this iron sulfate dissolved in solution to give us the iron ions we need. Well, this is gonna take a while to dissolve. We're getting there. Almost. Probably good enough. All right, so this has iron ions dissolved in it. Now we're gonna add the uh, iron indicator called ferroin, and ferroin is gonna be red in the presence of iron two, and blue in the presence of iron three. Just pop this in, see what happens. So that's pretty easy to tell that we've got iron two in this solution for sure. Look at that beautiful red color. And there's our indicator. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of this uh, iron indicator solution. Remember, it's got iron two ions in it, and those are gonna look red, of course. Our iron indicator looks red in the presence of iron two. And let's show you how we can get that blue color. 
by adding some cerium-4 ions, which are yellow. And cerium-4 ions are participating in the reaction as well. I'm just going to add a little bit here and see what happens. Oh, there we go. We got the blue color. Let's add a little bit more of the iron solution to see if we can't get this uh, color, the blue color to pop a little better. There we go. All right, that's a nice red. Let's see if we get a nice blue here. So that cerium-4, when it reacts with the iron-2, it makes iron-3, which is going to be blue in this presence of the indicator, but the cerium goes colorless, and that's why we get the color change to blue. There it is, almost. There we go. <laughs> that's just pretty. Now, of course, if I continue to add now the cerium-4 ions to the blue iron-3, we'll get green because there's no more reaction that's going to happen here, and the blue color should persist, and I'm just adding additional cerium-4 ions and the two of those together. If I can get enough of this in there, it should give us our green color. So at least this gives you an idea how you're going to see the different colors, the red, the green, and the blue, as these ions participate in that oscillating chemical reaction and they continue to fluctuate throughout the course of the reaction. Here we go, 100 mils of the bromate ion. That's one of our reactants. 100 mils of malonic acid. That's another one of our reactants. So these concentrations cannot fluctuate since they're reactants. Now we're gonna add a solution of cerium-4, which is yellow color, and when it's cerium-3, it's colorless. It's like a blinking yellow color. And this is the iron solution, which is gonna fluctuate between red and blue, and the various combinations of red, blue, colorless, and yellow give us a whole host of colors when the concentrations of these ions fluctuate. Let's hope for the best. There's your green. Starting to look aqua to me. And there's your blue.